Hallelujah. <clears throat> we thank God. Hallelujah. We worship you. We praise you this morning. For you alone are worthy of the praise. You alone are worthy of the glory. You alone are worthy of the honor. There is nobody like you, God. We can search all over and still can't find nobody like you. We give your name the praise. We give your name the glory. We give your name the honor, God. That's do your name. So you are such an awesome God. There is nobody greater than you, God. And so, God, we lift your name on high. We give your name the praise. We give your name the honor. God, we just love you today. We love you today. We lift your name on high. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give God the praise. Hallelujah. We give God the glory and we give God the honor. Hallelujah. Thank God for, hallelujah, having a musician with me today, Philip. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's such a, a treat when he's able to come home from school. When he's home from school, he's able to play. But I have both my boys here with me. Hallelujah. And I thank God and I bless God for both of them who I love so much. Um, hallelujah. And I give God the praise. Hallelujah. Because guess what? They believe in their mama and they believe in the God in their mother. Hallelujah. And that's a blessing. Hallelujah. And I give God the praise. So we're going to go ahead on into worship. We thank God and we bless God for being here. Hallelujah. He's such an awesome God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You ready, Philip? Hallelujah. You alone deserve the 
celebrated such an awesome Thanksgiving. God, we thank you, God, for keeping us and keeping our families, God, and keeping us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. God, keeping our loved ones safe and alive. And God, we can only give you the credit, God. We can only give you the credit for allowing us, God, to see another day. There is no one greater than you. There is no one like you. So we worship you, God. And we give your name the praise. We give your name the glory. And we give your name the honor. For God, we thank you right now for the word, God. We thank you, God, for cleaning me up, God, and turning me around, God. Lord, we ask, God, that I decrease now, and God, you increase in me. And God, that I will be all that you've called me to be. God, we cancel every spirit right now. We'll come up and try to hinder, to block. And we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. God, we ask God right now, you take the scales off of our eyes and you circumcise our ears, God, so that we may hear and we may see what it is that you have for us, God. And so, God, we give your name the praise, we give your name the glory, and we give your name the honor. So we thank you now in Jesus' name. For you alone deserve my worship. You alone deserve my praise. You alone deserve the honor. So we lift you high, Yahweh.
Hallelujah. We thank God for the word today. Hallelujah. That will be coming from Deuteronomy 30 and 19. And as you can see there from my title, my title talks about generational curse breakers. Generational curse breakers. Hallelujah. And I got this the other, really, I, I've been dealing with cycles. I've been dealing with breaking cycles off of my life, seeing that there are some things that have been happening in my life that have been going on and on and on. Some of which that I was aware of and some of which I wasn't aware of. And so God had me dealing with and, and in warfare, breaking off of these cycles. Cycles are similar to patterns. And God began to show me that I am a generational curse breaker. And what is a generational curse? Generational curses are <clears throat> things that have passed on from generation to generation. That's what generational curses are. They go down from generation to generation. And many of them, it's because of rebellion against God. If your family line is marked with divorce, with incest, with poverty, with anger, and other ungodly patterns, it's most likely it's coming from a generational curse. So we thank you right now for this word. And Lord, we ask that you come in and take over. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Philip. So let's look at Deuteronomy real quick, 30 and 19. Real short scripture. But this is where I will be coming from because God gave me this message because I, I am a generational curse breaker. My children are, and so are you. But we first must understand what it is that we're breaking and how important it is for us to break it. And number um, Deuteronomy 30 and 19, it says, I called heaven and earth as witness today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore, choose life and both you and your descendants may live. Now that's a powerful packed scripture right there. And the reason why we are generational curse breakers is because we are choosing life. It's because we are choosing to live. And so not only will we live, but our generation and our children and my children and their children and their seed is going to live because we are choosing life. Now we have to understand what these generational curses are so that we can understand. Now we all know that when Jesus came, he broke the curse, but you still have to understand we are living in a fallen world. So just because he came and he died and he broke it, you still have to be aware of it so that you can actually use the blood of Jesus to break it off. And many times we are ignorant and we are oblivious to these cycles and these patterns. 
And we wonder why we keep going round the same mountain like the children of Israel did in the wilderness over and over and over again. For a while now, God has been dealing with me with breaking these cycles off of my life. Because of I have been going through these things through the course of my life over and over again. Israel and the children of Israel, uh, the children of Israel in, in the wilderness, they were going around in that same cycle, in that same pattern over and over again. There are patterns and these curses are tied to the choices, y'all. These are the choices that we have made. Deuteronomy 30 and 19 says we can either choose life and blessings or death and cursing. I just read it for you. This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death. Now this is what God was saying to the people. So he says that against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursing. Curses. Now, God has given us a choice. Are we going to choose to live? Or are we going to choose to die? And meaning die, meaning the curses. Are you going to choose life or are you going to choose death? Now, we choose life. Now, choose life so that you and your children. So, the reason why my title is about generational curse breakers is because a generational curse breaker is choosing life. They're choosing to be not predicated by the sins of their forefathers and by the things that they wasn't aware of that took place, but they are a part of because they come down that lineage, because they come down that line. Just like Jesus did. He came down a lineage. He came down a line of, of these generational curses. This day, what are you going to choose? Are you going to choose life? Are you going to choose death? Are you going to choose the blessing? Are you going to choose curse? The key word there is choose. It has been many of our choices, y'all, that have kept us going around in these cycles. Exodus 20 and 5. Bible says, the Bible says that the children are punished for the sins of their father to the third and fourth generation. For example, of a child, if children of an alcoholic father frequently suffers neglect and abuse as a direct consequence of their father's sinful behavior. Then you will see uh, some of their children will follow in the same path because they chose to go down that way. Then you see uh, uh, that child uh, end up being an uh, um, uh, 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 alcoholic or addicted to some form of substance. If you see that the father had a uh, uh, perversion and lust issues, then you will see uh, uh, that means having different women all the time. Then you will see that child will end up being uh, 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 dealing with the same issues. It doesn't matter whether they are female or male. We are wrestling, y'all, not against flesh and blood, but these are spiritual things. These are things that we cannot see. And the only way we get to see them, y'all, is by our behaviors. 
So many times as a mental health counselor, I, I'm always, I don't really uh, 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 talk about the Lord like this unless a person of faith that talks to begin to talk about their faith, then that opens up the door for me to talk about godly things and faithful things and how to build up. But many times what I try to do is I try to explain to them about mental health. A lot of these things are on the inside of us. So if we're dealing with anger issues, if we're dealing with rejection, if we're dealing with things, uh, 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 let's say we're dealing with mental health issues uh, of bipolar, the reason why, hallelujah, psychiatrists and psychologists and therapists are able to diagnose people, the reason why we're able to diagnose them is because we can see that because of their behavior. That's how we know that you're dealing with certain things. The reason why I can know that I'm dealing with generational curses is because I'm seeing it in my behavior, in my actions, in the choices that I choose to make. That's how we get to see, uh, are we going to continue to choose life or uh, death? Are we going to choose life? Are we going to continue to go along the path that we have seen, the behaviors that we have seen people display in our family? Are, are, are we going to say, no, I'm going to be a generational curse breaker? So, so, so for many of us, another example of this, if you, uh, another example, see divorce. Divorce is a death of a family. Divorce is a death to a family. How is it a death? That whole family now has been separated and divided from everything that they knew was normal. The children, everybody, the whole family has been separated. And so if because it's a death, guess what happens? Now it causes for open doors to begin to come up. My grandma told me this long time ago that she was trying to break these generational curse of divorce in our family. She said because she got a divorce, hallelujah, years ago, years ago before she met my grandpa, uh, my grandfather, she said she knew that she was having to break uh, uh, these generational, uh, she wanted to be the breaker of that thing. So she would pray and she would pray, hallelujah. But guess what? It starts within us. So now look what happened. Divorce comes in and it's a death to a family. Divorce is linked to, and guess what usually happens once a divorce comes in into a family, if that, that family or that mother and that father, uh, hallelujah, don't try to do their best to keep the, uh, 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 the family together in terms of knowing that each parent loves them. So it says that uh, that's linked to this. Now you can look at these things. This is nothing new. Hallelujah. I'm just pointing these things out so that you can understand what a generational curse is and how you become a generational curse breaker. But first you must understand what it is and what area do, are you seeing it in your life? I'm just giving these examples because much of this is what I have gone through. And God has begun to show me because of these things, I continue to struggle, but God is showing me now because now I have an understanding and now I have such a close relationship with God. He's allowing me to be able to break it off of my life and break it off and help my children break it off of their lives.
So because of divorce, it's many times leaked to you uh, 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 the higher rates of depression, higher rates of suicidal ideations and attempts, health problems. Children uh, uh, become be, uh, 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 easy and susceptible to be sexually abused, school dropouts. Uh, the kids get so distraught because their parents got a divorce and they separated. They don't care about going to school. So they drop out of school. A failure to attend college. Now, because they dropped out of high school, now they don't even attend college. Where you see they was on one track to attend college. Now you see because of the divorce, there's sadness, there's darkness. And now the children end up not going in the way that they want to go. So a failure to attend college. Arrest. Addiction. Teen pregnancy. And many more people that come from divorced parents continue to struggle with these scars that are left, such as higher, uh, 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 harder times finishing school, harder times finishing school, getting and keeping jobs, maintaining relationships. Having lasting marriages. All of these things come from what? This. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, that day when I was praying, no longer do I want to continue to live my life in a cycle. No longer do I want to continue uh, uh, to be in this cycle um, because of things that have happened to me or uh, because of some of them have been my choices and some of them are things that my parents or, or their parents or different people have made in their life. I said, God, no more. Because I know a man named Jesus. You know what, y'all? Jesus is the ultimate curse breaker. Who came down 41 generations from Abraham <laughs> to Jesus. 41 generations. You hear that, Philip? 41 generations. Jesus came down from 41 generations. Do you know that in those 41 generations that there were murderers? There were thieves. There were adulterers. Uh, um, there were all types of lustful incest. Etc. But because of Jesus coming and dying on the cross, y'all, he broke every curse. So when Jesus came, he wanted us to know that we too are curse breakers. Jesus was the ultimate curse breaker. So he don't want us to never say that because of this happened, hallelujah, that that's going to happen to us. Because of this, that that's going to be our story. No, no. But let me tell you something, y'all. It ain't going to be easy. When you finally learn that you are a generational curse breaker, guess what? You got to, you got to go through something. G didn't Jesus go through something? You know why Jesus had to pay the ultimate sacrifice for breaking the curse? It's because he had to die on the cross. He had to shed his blood in order to break the curse. So what do we think about us? When we find out, hallelujah, that there is some uh, uh, some issues in our life, when we're getting tired and sick and tired of, and not knowing what's going to happen to us, we tired of seeming like we got to work so hard. We got to, oh, we got to go through. My life has just been so hard. And then when God began to show me in his word and he begin to tell me, Tina, the reason why it's so hard, hallelujah, is because you are a generational curse breaker. <laughs> I, I 
was uh, talking with my sons. Hallelujah. I, I, I was praying with my oldest. And, and when I was praying with him, he, he, he was dealing with some life trials and tribulations. And then I began to pray for him. And God began to give me this message today. He told me while I was praying for him, hallelujah, that my son is a generational curse breaker. And generational curse breakers, they don't have it easy. It's not going to be easy because what you are doing is you're going down in your generation and you're saying that this stops with me. Divorce stops with me. Lustfulness stops with me. Hallelujah. Poverty and lack stop with me. I'm going to be, hallelujah, wealthy. I'm going to have this and I'm going to have that. But I got to do my work just like Jesus did. He came and he did his work. Poverty and lack will not be my portion. Hallelujah. I'm not going to have to. And if I got the struggle, guess what? It's not even about me. I told my son, I said, son, it's not even about you. Ha. Hallelujah. Jesus came. It wasn't even about Jesus, but it was about us. It was about us to save us. Hallelujah. So that we can have a tree to life. It was, and I told my son, it's not even about you. Stop thinking about how hard you got it. But if you go through this thing, it's for your seed to seed. It's for your uh, uh, one day, your children and your grandchildren. What I'm going through is so my children and then they children and they going to have that thing. And then my other son came home huh, and he was dealing with some things and I had to tell him the same thing. I said, baby, you are a generational curse breaker. Because what you are doing is breaking off, not only for you, but for everybody that comes after you. So no, it won't pass down from generation to generation. No, it, it, it won't go from, um, from, from you to your children. No, it won't come that way. Hallelujah. Just because I got a divorce, just because your grandparents got a divorce, you will not get a divorce. Jesus, he came and he broke it down through 41 generation and generations where he had all of these things and all of these people and all of these things. But we must understand that it's a spiritual fight. We are not wrestling against flesh and blood. It is a spiritual one. And that's how we fight it. We fight it in spirit. We fight it in the spirit. We cannot fight this thing with our hands. That's what my grandma Rosa told me years ago when I was dealing with the spirit of fear and, and death. Hallelujah. My granny told me, she said, Tina, you trying to fight this thing with your fist. But she said, you can only fight this thing with the spirit. Isn't it awesome to have people in your life that's going to tell you the words of wisdom? and how to fight. You cannot fight this thing. You want to put up your, you cannot fight these battles. A uh, hallelujah with your fists. You can't, you got to fight them with the spirit because let me tell you something. There's an evil day coming. Hallelujah. And in that evil day, you got to stand. How do you stand? You stand with the shield of faith. You stand with your Lord's guarded up with you. You stand with the peace shot of preparation. You stand. With the whole armor of God. That's how you stand. So when I was telling my son this, God began to show me Joseph. God began to show me how Joseph was a generational curse breaker. If you go to uh, our Exodus, hallelujah. If you go, hallelujah, to uh, Genesis, I'm sorry, 50. 
hallelujah, in 20. And you will see here that Joseph was a generational curse breaker. Uh, uh, Joseph had been in prison. Job would have been enslaved. He was in all of those things. Uh, hallelujah. His own brother sold him. Y'all know the story. His own brother sold him into slavery. Uh, hallelujah. Joseph missed out on a lot. He missed out on the years of being with his family. He missed out on a lot of being with his father. Father. And by the time he got back with his father, guess what? His father was getting ready to die. <laughs> Hallelujah. But there was something greater. There was something greater that Joseph had to go through this for. So if you look here in uh, Genesis 50, hallelujah, when his brothers came to him and they came to apologize to him, what did he end up saying? He said, but as for you, you, you meant it for my evil. See, there are going to be people huh, along the way when you're a generational curse breaker, huh, Philip and Daniel, huh, there are going to be people that's going to come along the way. Huh. Some of them may be related to you huh, and some of them might not be, huh, but they're going to come in your life huh, and they're going to try to steer you wrong huh, and they're going to do things that are uh, evil huh, to try to get you off track. Huh, but when when you are a generational curse breaker, hallelujah, look what Joseph had to do. But in the end, look what he says. He says, but as for you, you meant it for my against me. When people are coming against you, it's not the people, y'all. We are wrestling not against flesh and blood, but it's against principalities. It's not them. It wasn't Joseph brothers, but it was the evil spirit. That's what you're wrestling with. So the devil used people just like God used people. The devil used people too. And so what happened was, he said, but you meant it for evil against me, but God meant it for good. Don't look at what's being done to you. Look at what's being done for you to break off of these chains, to break them off. In order to bring it about as it is this day. That's powerful, y'all. In order to bring it about, God is trying to break off some stuff off of our life. But we got to choose it. It's either we going to choose the curse or we going to choose the blessing. Isn't that what uh, uh, Deuter Deuteronomy said here? Deuteronomy, um, uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, Deuteronomy 30 and 19. Isn't that what it said right there? It says, this day I call the heavens and the earth as a witness against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursing. Now choose life so that you and your children, y'all, do y'all, oh my God, G God was way back in Doodle. Where was this found? It's in the five books of the Genesis. Then you got Exodus. Then you got what? Then you got Deuteronomy. It was God was speaking back then, telling us what we got to do to break them off now. You think he didn't know that? You think he didn't see that? He said, but if you choose life, now choose life so that you and your children may live. So you are not doing this. You ain't got your children yet. You ain't got your children yet. So what you're doing now is for them. What I'm doing now is for y'all to break it off. So what did Joseph, so what he said, he said, but as for you, you might, uh, you meant it evil against me, but God meant it for my good in order to bring it about as it is today. You got to go through. The process is through. It's easy to look and compare, but your role is not everybody else's role. 
God got a plan and he got a call for your life, for my life. The enemy's job is to try to distract you. We have an enemy, the adversary, the enemy, the devil. That's seeking through and for who he may devour. He, he is coming in to stop you from being that generational curse breaker. He don't want you to break these things. So what happens is, is that because you keep choosing the path that was the enemy done set before you in your line. So when my daddy was like that, so I guess I'm be like that. So then you start feeling downtrodden. Then you start feeling all bad. But you ain't even got no reason to feel bad. Because now he's telling you what Joseph went through. All of those years of being enslaved. All of those years of being away from his family. No doubt he was feeling bad. No doubt sometimes he thought, probably thought God wasn't there. But he said, but he said, in order to bring about as this day to save many lives. Come on him. Come on. Many people lives. So what you are doing, you are breaking it off for a nation, for a generation. Exodus 20 and 5. The Bible says that the children per perish for the sins of their father and to the third and fourth generation. You're not under that when you become and you get into God. You ain't got to go through these cycles no more. You don't have to. You're not predicated to these things anymore. So, 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 so when Joseph, now look what it says right here. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly. So that's why you can look at your enemies. <laughs> you can look at the ones when you win and you become victorious and you break off them. You can look at them and say, thank you. You helped me to see what I needed. to. Thank you. Don't look at them and, 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 and look at what they're doing as something like, oh, uh, the Bible says, love them that spitefully use you and say all manner of evil against you. Joseph loved his brothers, even though they meant it for evil. But God turns everything around, y'all. He turns everything around and he works it out for our good. Hallelujah. This is a good word. Hallelujah. Now look at here. It goes on. So guess what, y'all? Hallelujah. Maybe you have inherited family curses. Or maybe the curse has begun with you. But let me tell you, God has a plan. God has a plan for us. A plan of freedom. And it started over 2,000 years ago when he died on the cross. His plan for us is that we will be set free from all curses. His plan for us was that he, we will break and shatter every chain of these cycles. Choose, but there's a choice that we have to make. We have to choose to be a generational curse breaker, which is going to cause us to live and our children's children to live. Or are we going to continue to go down the life of curses? Are we going to stop and, uh, 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 and live and stop it from passing down to our children and their children? Listen, what, what, um, John eight and 36, uh, look at that. It's a reminder, eight 31 through 36, where it reminds us that as we abide in Jesus Christ, we receive his freedom. <laughs> 
That's why the more I grow in God, the more I form my relationship with God, y'all, the more God shows me. I was talking with my father on his birthday and I was telling my dad, I said, dad, the closer I get to Jesus, the closer my relationship is with God, the more God shows me Pratina. The more God shows me how a mess I am. And therefore, God, if you notice something, the closer you get to God, he never really shows you about other people. If he shows you about other people, he's showing you how these things have been used in other people to get you to stop you or to block you. Or he'll show you people that he had placed in your life to be there to help you but never to show you stuff to fix you. He shows you you to fix you because the only person that you can fix is you. So God is going to show you how messed up you are. He's going to show you these things not to beat you up, but so that you can become free. Isn't that what eight? 31 in, in uh, eight, uh, John 8 and 31 says that who the son is set free is free indeed. So he, he became the curse breaker. So because Jesus became the generational curse breaker, the only way we break the curse off of us is we begin with Jesus. That means we got to form a relationship with him. That means that we got to uh, uh, get in our word and develop a prayer life. Uh, hallelujah. We can't go the road that, that, that the others go. We, we, if we really want to break them off of our life, we have, must choose Jesus. His way, his way, his way, his will. We must choose him. And that's what John talks about, reminds us that if we abide in Jesus Christ, we receive his freedom. The key there is abide. The key there is abide in him. Jesus has set us free from sin. So that means if he came and has set us free, not just saying, well, I save and I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. Honey, you got to go deeper than that. Than just the sinner's prayer. If you want to break off of this stuff, off of your life, if you are tired like I am of going through these freaking cycles, you're going to have to get closer to Jesus. Jesus has set us free from sin. That's why we are generational curse breakers. He has set us free from our sins, our forefathers' sin, our foremother's sins. Hallelujah. That means we are free from penalty, moral liability, and the ongoing curses of sin. Jesus Christ is the anointed one. In my closing, y'all, we must abide in Jesus. We must choose Jesus, his way and his will. I was talking with my youngest son yesterday and I said, why do you think it's so easy for us to keep going in that direction that we know that God didn't choose for us. Why is it so easy to stay in that way, especially when we know the way? Why, why do you think? And I think his response was that we have gotten comfortable and Basically complacent in going in that way. Well, I come to tell, I come to make you uncomfortable with sin. I come to tell you if you are tired 
of going around in these generational curses and cycles and patterns, then how you break it is truly, you can't, it's either you're going to be hot. Let me tell you, God does not, you got to abide in Jesus. And you got to do it his way. Giving your whole heart, your whole, I, I can't, light and darkness can't dwell together. It's either you're going to have one or the other. Allow God, I was reading this book. And this book about spiritual, um, walking in the spirit. And this man, he, he was talking about how um, God began to, he got saved and he began to pray in the Holy Spirit. And as he began to pray in the Holy Spirit for hours, sometimes eight hours, this man would pray in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is that heavenly language, that language that connects us to God. That's how we talk to God. And he said he used to smoke and it was so difficult for him to stop smoking. Even as he was saved, he was saved and he was praying and he was, he was praying and stuff like that. Even when he began to pray in the spirit, but as he began to pray in the spirit, he said, God took the cigarette taste away. He didn't have to do any rituals. He didn't have to take no medicine. He didn't have to go to this doctor. He didn't have to do any of those things. I'm not saying you can't go to the uh, uh, to the therapist or, or anything like that. But what I am saying that in Jesus, he will break everything. The more we abide in Jesus, the more we give God everything he'll take away every sin he'll take away every curse but it's going to require your obedience to the word your obedience to God you know what they are I don't have to tell you like I know what they are He is the burden remover. He is the yoke destroying power, has the yoke destroying power. So you will not be like your father, your father's father. You will not be like your mother, your mother's mother. You know that saying, father like son? No, you won't be. Because God's got a plan. But we must choose life. And by meaning choosing life, we must choose him. God has redeemed us from the curse. Being passed down from generation to generation. What will you choose? Will you choose the curse or will you choose the blessing? Will you choose to continue in the curse or you will choose to be a generational curse breaker? These redemption, this redemption comes as we understand the root causes of our problem. That's what I've been dealing with. I've been dealing with root causes. Where did that root cause come for you, Tina? It came from rejection. It came from being abandoned. That's where that root cause came. So as I begin to look at rejection, I wrestle with fear of being rejected. I wrestle with self-rejection. 
so uh, as I begin to understand these root causes, these root generational curses, uh, 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 because this happened, my grandparents, my parents, this happened, and then now I've done it. I've gotten a divorce. So what happens is now I'm breaking that thing. My children are breaking those things. So you have to understand the root. The root cause of the problem. And guess what that root cause is? It's a spiritual one. It's in the spiritual realm. If we want God to take it away, we got to get, he's a spirit. We fight it in the spirit. Hallelujah. As we apply God's words to the end power to our lives, and we choose to walk in righteousness and obedience to God, he will break the chain. He will break every curse, every evil spirit. He will break it. And I'm choosing to be a generational curse breaker. How about you? Are you choosing to be a generational curse breaker? Abraham was a generational curse breaker. Because when he was obedient to God, and he went up there on that mountain to kill his son, because of his obedience, God said that from generation to generation, they will be blessed. Search yourself. Allow God to search you. I'm telling you now, y'all, if every time I ask God to search me and to purge me and to clean me up, God show me everything that is in me that is not like you. I'm telling you when I open myself up, y'all, I'm an I'm a open vessel for God. I just want to be everything that God has called me to be. I want to live this, leave this world empty. Empty. Because I have given all that God has called me to this earth to do. So we thank you now for this word. We thank you now for your love. God, we thank you, God, for being generational curse breakers. That because, God, you came and you redeemed us and you died, we are no longer under the law, the curse of the law. We're no longer dictated by our forefathers and our foremothers, God. That, God, that because of your blood, and once we recognize who you are and allow you to show us, God, that we are curse breakers. God, you said that, that you seek me, you will find me. If you seek me, God, let us begin to seek God for the answer. Let us begin to seek God to show us to show us ourselves. Take your eyes off of other people. Take your eyes off of what people have done to you like Joseph. Take your eyes off of what people have said about you. Take your eyes and your thoughts off of what uh, uh, has happened to you. And say, God, I'm going to do my work. God, I'm going to break these things off of 
me so that my children's children's children will be millionaires, will be billionaires. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I'm a breaking off of me. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I will graduate college. I will, hallelujah, go on to be successful. I will be an entrepreneur. I will marry and be with one woman, one man. Hallelujah, till I leave this earth. Hallelujah, I will, God, abide in you, God. Hallelujah, I'm breaking off generational curses of lust. Hallelujah, of adultery, of fornication. Hallelujah, of deceitfulness, of lying, of cheating. In the mighty name of Jesus of poverty, of lack. I am a curse break. I am a generational curse break. Break it off. Break it off, God. And stop stop looking at you. Stop looking at you and what's being done to you. But if God is allowing it, he's allowing it for your good. He's allowing it so that you can be free. For who the Son is set free is free indeed. But the only way that we know is because God has got to show us. He's got to allow all of that ugliness, all of that yuck, all of that stuff in us to come out so that we can break it off of us. And then our children won't get a divorce. Then our children won't ha, live in poverty and lack. That they won't drop out of school so that they won't become addicted to substances. We got to break this thing off. And how do we break it off? We break it off in Jesus. In Jesus! So God, we thank you now for teaching us, God, how to be a generational curse breaker. That no longer will we be predicated by the sins of our father or our mothers. No longer would that be a controlling factor? But you must choose life. You can't have it both ways. You can't still go out and do all of these things and, and think that, that are ungodly and that are not putting you in the path of what you want. He says that he got a plan uh, 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 to bring you to, not of evil, but of good, to get you to an expected end that you want. How you expect God to give it to you when you don't want to live like God? How you expect God to break it off and you don't want to uh, do the things of God? And one thing I am learning, humility goes a long way. You can't think that you know it all. You got to be humble and teachable. Because if somebody came and said, Tina, I see this. This man of God came and told me, he said, Tina, he said, you woman of God, you are a woman of God and you're going on the right direction. He says, but there is the, God is healing you. He's healing your heart so that you won't hurt the people. I had to receive that. What he was saying was, God is healing my heart so that I won't hurt the people that God has assigned me to in the work in the ministry. If I thought that I knew it all, I wouldn't have been able to receive that word from him because I was like, who is he? What is he talking about? I love the Lord. I'm doing this for God. No. He was right. 
there was still some brokenness in me. And God sent that prophet to tell me that God is healing me so that I won't hurt somebody else because I'm still hurt. You must be humble because we don't know it all. If you can't hear from other people, then how in the world are you going to hear from God? If you can't accept things from other people of God, then how in the world are you going to hear from God? Especially when they're telling you the truth and they're speaking truth. They're speaking the word. They're speaking it. Not everybody is against you. So what you have to do is go and look at self. And allow God. Abide in him. And he would do the work in you. He would do the work. So we thank you, God, for this word. We thank you, God, for your people. We cancel off any assignment to block, to hinder, to stop. the people, God, from getting to this place to become this generational curse breaker. We cancel every seed of doubt right now in the mighty name of Jesus. That God, that you will begin to show them you themselves, God, and that they will stop looking at everybody else. But they will begin to look at themselves. That's all I can do is say, God, show me me. Because I'm the only one that I can fix. And we thank you now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're more real than The ground I'm standing on, you're more real than the wind in my lungs, the thorns define me, you're inside of me, cause you're my Reality, I've heard. I belong to you, oh God, yeah, oh, I
I'm a curse break. I'm a generation of 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 curse break. Are you a generation of curse break? Are you a generation of curse break? Are you a generation of curse break? Cause I'm a generation of curse break. I'm a generation of curse break. I'm a generation of curse break. I'm breaking it for me. I'm breaking it for my seat. I'm breaking it, 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 breaking it. So we thank you right now for this word. Awesome worship. Awesome word. The word is worship as well. So we thank you, God, for this day. Oh, I love you, God. And I love my family. I may not be called to the nations, but I am surely called to my family. And we gonna break these generational curses. So I thank you now. And I'll see y'all back on Wednesday for Bible study. I hope y'all had an awesome Thanksgiving. Celebrate it. I'm so grateful. So grateful for my family and friends. I, I thank God for, for everyone. Thank God. Thank God for my boys. They my heart. They know it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They give me strength to keep moving. Because I know they're looking at me. <laughs> Even though they might not say it. But I know they do. So I thank God. Bless God for y'all. See y'all back on Wednesday. God bless. Love y'all. Amen.